millions more pensioners will start paying income tax today after an 8.5% increase to the state pension, which many had hoped would mean they had more money. But as the income tax threshold has been frozen, it means many more find themselves the downside here, paying tax. Let me just show you how this works. It all goes back to this famous triple lock, which is designed to make pensions rise by the greatest of three factors. So lock number one, the rate of inflation. Lock number two, average earnings growth. And lock number three is two and a half percent. Whichever of those is greatest. Now, in this case, it's average earnings growth. Lock number two, which is being used as the measure, and that means a pension rise of 8.5%. So just to show you here, the old pension rates, there were two ones applicable, 203 pounds a week, 156 pounds a week, are moving to 221 pound 20 a week for the full new flat rate state pension for those who got to state pension age after April 2016, and 169 pound 50 for those on the basic state pension who were pensioners before April 2016. Okay, that's most pensioners. So the key figure to look at now is this tax threshold figure. And let's have a look. Let's just bring it out here. The amount, the point at which you start paying tax. The point at which you start paying tax is 12,570 pounds. Crucial. Before that, no tax is due. And here's the problem. Bring on the sexy graph. Here is the problem. Most pensioners are now getting £11,500 a year. Income tax starts at £12,500 a year. So there's no tax payable on the state pension. The problem is you only need an extra £1,000 a year of private pension to start paying tax. And this figure has been frozen for a while. So people, pensioners, are being trapped in income tax when nobody really intended that, Christo, did they? Um, I think they absolutely intended it because... Not originally. Means, not originally, but I think now what the government are doing is that they're giving with one hand and they're taking away with the other. It is outrageous, I believe, that you work all of your life paying tax and you get to the point where you are at pension age, you then have a government which I think has done one of the good things that this government has done, which has protected the earnings of those pensioners, who many of whom can't work, many of whom have reached an age where it's impractical to work. And, and many of them are very, I'm, very can rich. Can I just finish, finish, and then I'll... Talking for ages. Well, <laughs> then, then, then what happens in the debate is that <laughs> I talk... Not ages, actually. And then you okay. talk. He's That's coming how the debate towards works. the end. Coming towards the end, and you've just delayed it now. Um, <laughs> and you you pay tax on all that money all your life. You then end up with a pension, which you then pay tax on. So you're double taxed. You don't pay tax on the money you put into your pension, do you? You have tax back on it. That's the whole yeah, point. But okay, you're, can, you're being taxed can, on the money that you end up earning what, all your life. Why should entitled boomers not pay tax? They were given everything basically on a silver platter, and we need to normalise that actually your national insurance contributions. It's just a tax. And we need to normalise that actually your pension is a benefit. It's a welfare benefit. That's what you're claiming for. Oh, you think pensions are on welfare? It's a benefit. You are claiming state pe pension. It is a benefit. And that's a fact. Now, a lot of pensioners, many pensioners, there's poor pensioners, they need help. Of course they do. I'm not sitting here saying they don't. But we have a lot of rich pensioners, mortgage-free, thousands in the bank account, and actually we're handing out money. And it's like pocket money for them. It's like pocket money. They don't need the money. Would you give welfare benefit to someone who's unemployed, whose mortgage is paid off, they don't pay rent, and they've got thousands in the bank account? No, you wouldn't. Why are we handing out money to rich people? Let's, let's ask Jack in Cheshire. Jack, what do you think of that? I think what Narendra said is absolutely disgraceful. I'm sorry. But so why, Jack? I, I personally think that pensioners should be able to have £36,525 a year, that's equivalent of £100 a day, tax-free. What? And I mean tax-free. They've Why? worked all their lives, like Christoph said, because they've worked, and they've worked probably a lot harder than you have, Narinda. A lot of them have broke their backs working. Well, she They're in poor Jack health because of their work. But Jack, They're in national... poor health you... because of their work. I've seen them in hospital beds. 
only on Saturday, on um, yesterday afternoon when I was leaving the county of Chester Hospital. People in the poor state Jack, of health. May I say people with asbestosis. Uh, wait, we hear you, Jack. We hear you. Jack, let, 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 let Narinda make a point, Jack. As Jack. I am myself, and I'm not even 65 yet. OK, but Jack, this country can't afford it. We've got an a, a increasing pension age and we've got a decrease in birth rate. And we don't have many people in the middle working. And so you're saying a 23-year-old on a basic wage... They have to hand their tax over to a pensioner who actually, you've got a state pension and the poor pensioners deserve the money, Jack, I agree. But there's a lot of rich pensioners who are mortgage free. Why are we giving them money that we a don't have? These, Jack. A lot of these people have actually worked from the age of 14. And? I actually worked 14 hours on my 16th birthday. Right. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even quite 61 yet. But you're still getting your it's state just pension. Ridiculous. Some of these people have worked all their lives and they've worked very hard and okay. they've been very diligent. Your, right. My your own mother worked with a, a nurse account. for years. Your, your pension is national insurance contributions well, are not ring fenced for see your them, pension. But they of think it's, it's a savings. It's they, not ring fenced. It's not a savings. So account. That's exactly it's a lie. what it is. Your, pen, your national insurance contributions, if you think that some savings well, account is a it's lie, an it's an account for well, the way in which you're going given, to have to live when you're, you're older. You're told it's a savings account. It's true that the government now run it as a Ponzi scheme, meaning right. that they, they pay out what they get in on the day they get it. You need However, there is supposed to be a link between what you've paid in tax and what you get out. Thank you, Jack, and, and all the best to, to you, you and your mates. Derek in Northamptonshire, hi. Oh, good morning, Jeremy. Well, is, is Narinda right? Well, I think she is to an extent. And on that particular issue, I'd say there are pensioners who may have a state pension, may have an occupational pension, they may have investment income, they may be a couple who have combined income, which comes to quite a lot of money. Well, no, Therefore, I think to some degree, there are cases where tax should be paid after a certain level. But as you've alluded to in the introduction, the essential issue is the fiscal drag that the tax-free allowance has not been raised yeah. in proportion to people's incomes. If that was put right, I think people would be happier. You think, so you think 12 and a half grand is too low? So you'd, th you'd start people paying tax at 14, let's say? 15. Well, yes, I think so. Mm. Even more. What's about, what about Jack's idea that pensioners have a, should earn £100 a day tax-free, which is 36 and a half thousand a year? Well, that does sound rather a lot, I would say. <laughs> But then we'd have the richest pensioners in the world, and that would be great. Well, th I think it that there's somewhere would, would there, there is a middle ground. Twenty, twenty-five thousand pounds. That's where they start paying tax. Who's Why can't we have who's that? Who's going to pay for this? I don't know this pot of money. Who's paying what for this? Young we people. don't have. Young we people. don't have. They're not young people on basic minimum wage. What they're handing over their money for rich of pensioners. Society, are we going to be that we say to the oldest people in our society, "Sorry, you're going to have to just make do," it's and I'm afraid end up in poverty. Well, well, we well, we've for kind private of, pensions. in a way, we've done a bit of that with, with, and we've seen from the WASPy women. The, the result, which is, you know, that people have been told, so you thought you were retiring at 60, it's now going to be 66. So we have done a bit of that, Narinda. There was quite a lot of anger about that it. Was, I mean, yes. It, I mean, when, you, when I look at that case, it's, you know, quite dreadful. And I've is this? Well, yeah, well, that's like, what you want. Well, because it was diff Well, no, because for those, those women, they were promised some... There, there was a real promise. And then they raised the age. Whereas I think that we need to normalise language around pension. Okay. That people think it's a right. It's not... Well, really then maybe right. what you do is you do, you do a, a bigger pension paid later. So we all draw it at 75. What if you don't live till that age? Well, it, or right? if you're a plumber. That's the other problem. People well, are course. paying into the system. I've paid into my system. Well, you may die before you get that. It's not a guarantee. I think, I think there are arguments about raising the pension age responsibly and with enough notice. I do, because I think we are living longer. And I think that is a fair comment. It's something that I've argued about. But the idea of being taxed on that money, I think, is outrageous. And I will stick to that. It is not... Fair. And I'm sorry, I know that some of these pensioners have ended up in homes that they've ended up uh, uh, owning or they've ended up with, with wealth in property and those sorts of things, but that is because of the failure of successive governments to build enough houses to therefore uh, bring make prices Maybe normal. They should okay. That's not, their five that's not well, pensioners' fault. Maybe that's... they should sell their five-bedroom house and downsize, because what, what is an old couple doing in a five-bedroom house? Sell it, downsize. Well, enjoying it, watching yeah, TV. Living there all Ro their lives. Roger and Kent, hi. Hello. What do you think, Roger? Well, I, I, I'm a pensioner, right. and I have a private pension, which, which my, com I have my own company for 28 years, 
which I paid a lot of money into. And I and what happens now is the state pension goes up and they take it straight out of my private pension. Yeah. I worked damned hard for my company over the years, paying tax, National Insurance Corporation tax, and I should be paying tax. Give me an idea. So I paid a lot roughly, into this. Well, roughly speaking, Roger, the, the state pension's 11 and a half grand. How much yeah. extra do you get from your private pension? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say. Well, right, it, so that's, is it doubled? Yeah, I, I, get, I, I get about £400 a month from it. £500. OK, so, so yeah, so you're being oh, taxed on almost all of that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And, and oh, I'm lucky enough. I own my own house. I haven't done the mortgage, but I worked hard. I worked damn hard. But Roger, my Roger that's my point. I'm not disagreeing or, you know, you've worked hard. Your generation have worked hard, but you're mortgage free. Why are you going to claim a benefit from the pe from pension, state pension? Why? You've got your private well, pension. Look, Why are you claiming money that you actually don't need? Because guess what? We can't afford it. So you expect him to live on oh, £500 pound a month? No, I don't expect that either. I don't expect no, but, him to well, live Roger on £500. Say, pound well, I guess you would say you paid the tax, Roger. I paid the tax and I'm, I, I, I like to in, 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 enjoy my money, go out, have a new car, this, that and the other. Well, why not? I All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Hillary in West Yorkshire, hi. Hi. Has everybody finished shouting? Good morning. Oh, I feel they may not have done, <laughs> but you get a word in. Yeah, well, this uh, everybody keeps going on about this rise, this 8%. It's nothing because it's all got eaten up with utilities, cost of living and everything else. Yes, this lady on the panel is saying to her, Roger, yes, you've got your house. I've got my little bungalow. At my first wage I got on the 4th of April 1965, I got £2.10 shilling and I paid 7 and 6 in national insurance. I had three jobs. I paid for my house. I'd work. I'd work. Every, and my husband then was a sheet metal worker. He got £7 a week. It was damned hard. We'd worked hard. Yeah. I'd worked 52 years, and I still get the low pension. Yeah. That will, well, it's going up again. And but, just a minute before, before you put in, Mrs., I'll tell you now, I've still to pay for my teeth and my glasses. I've just paid for new glasses at £105, and I've been for a checkup on my teeth at £65. Yeah. I can't, I'm not as mobile as I was because I've had spinal operation and a hip. So obviously I have to have my eating on a bit longer than everybody else. And the dental else. thing is a whole, I mean, the idea that there's any NHS dentistry anymore, I haven't seen it. I don't know where it, where it is. <laughs> no. If anyone can find it, let me know. Um, but but there we are. The, Hillary, I'd argue you've, you, you, your generation shift. may have you've you've put the work in. There's no denying that. But you had it so much easier than the younger so generation. Then the younger generation won't even get on oh, the property could, ladder. Could. They will not even get on the property ladder. They're on minimum wage. There's a cost of living crisis, and you had free everything how, almost. How, and I think now I'm not you saying you're not entitled to benefit. Hillary has pension. had it easy. They, they, um, Entitled boomers. It's very privileged that's way of thinking. Outrageous. And that this country can't outrageous. afford it. There are more poorer, there are more stock, poorer children let, in this let, country. Let, let, Hillary, come, what Hillary, what do you come take, back in on this, you Hillary? take Hillary's bungalow away from her? Take it away, Hillary. No, you don't she's deserve it. That. That's Hillary, fine. you reply. Can, I, can you tell that lady to shut up shouting because she hasn't a clue? Her name is I work three jobs. I worked three jobs. I brought two boys up. My first boy, you didn't get child benefit. You didn't get child benefit your first child till 1978, right? I brought two boys up. I worked three. I worked three jobs. All right. I didn't get any benefit. I I think, Nobody suppose, helped me out. I suppose, Hillary, it's the it's the fact the young the Gen Z as they're called the young ones say they can work eight jobs. They'll never be able to afford a house. Right. That's that. They'll never have a house you to live in. Don't solve that problem by taking it away from people. We're not people. taking away. Hang on, let, can I finish again. a sentence? Can I just finish a sentence? You do not solve that problem by taking it away from people like Hillary. Hillary, who has put into the system all her life, worked really hard to do so, and then that that is what it Britain is supposed to She's be about. A bungalow. You put in. And then at the end of it, you get a little no, you something don't. back. You right. need to stop that thinking. Pause, we pause, don't. pause. Let's, let's, so we love calls on this. If you're just receiving the state pension, you'll still be fine. If it's only the state pension, uh, you won't pay tax. But anything in addition is placing you in danger. Angela in Cardiff, hi. Good morning. So are you in this situation, Angela? Well, we're, uh, we do pay some income tax, basically. Um, I think my view is not going to be that popular at the moment with your viewers, but um, I'm a retired nurse. 
My husband's a retired civil servant. We are not rich by any stretch of the imagination. However, at the moment, we can, if we want to eat out, we can. We can if we want to go on holiday, we can. And I just think sometimes we need those of us who are retired need to stop for a moment and think about our own situation in that we are better off than a lot of people with young families who are struggling at the moment. And I'm not trying to get the government off the hook here, are but you, we are where we an are. Idea of what, so so the, if the state pension is 11 and a half and there's, there's two of you getting it, so that's, that's 23, is it? Does it double, just a straight double? for, mm. Or is it a married... Yeah, OK, 20... So it's, it's different, but... My point so, is. So, how, so what do you, but yeah, but you, what's the total add up to? It sounds like you're probably on uh, 50 grand or something between the two of you. Well, she's got a nurse oh, no. Time. Oh, no. No, not at all. No, not because our, our NHS and civil service pensions are not that high. Yeah. But, the, but the, what I'm trying to say is, I think that sometimes we have to stop and think about our own position and well, think about the fact that there are people with families who are really, really struggling. Understood. And I know we've worked hard. I've been a nurse, worked horrendous hours all my life, apart from having my children. Um, but I do think sometimes we have to stop and look inside ourselves and say, at the moment, we we can manage. And, right. um, is it, is and it having kids that's given you this? Your kids, I'm guessing, uh, they're in the world and it's a hard old world out there. Yeah, I mean, they're OK. They're very much uh, uh, the view that I am, that, you know, we can't, we can't be saying all the time, things are terrible, we need more money. Really, are we? I mean, we're not, we're not struggling. We, we can go out for a meal if we want. We can go on holiday if we want. Okay. Uh, but we've got, you know, we're, we're not uh, expecting a great deal. Understood. But I do think sometimes we have to be completely honest with ourselves. Thank you, Angela, very much indeed. Nick is in Devon. Beautiful Devon. Hi, Nick. Oh, hi there, Jeremy and panel. Um, yeah, well, uh, my, I, I've got sort of two points ready, but firstly, a very general point, really, and that is that um, I think we should be looking at sort of general income for everybody, and I think the lady on the panel and everything, you know, has a point from, from some a point of view, and um, I do think, actually, that, you know, uh, ha having the tax threshold where it is at the moment is totally wrong. The government actually increased it, um, or, or helping people with natural, um, national insurance was not a good thing in the budget. In my opinion, anyway, the, the threshold should have been sort of put up to £15,000 for everybody. That was my first point. But All right, that, that does... Point, well, yeah, but hang on. The, if, you, if you increase the, the tax-free band to fifteen grand, you do give a tax cut to people who are on 100000 a year. Yeah, you, you, you It's do, not a very targeted but, way of doing it. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah, but proportionately speaking, obviously it helps the lower incomes more than it does the rich. Well, but anyone who's earning just, above that gets the help. Yeah, yeah. that's right. OK, but could I just go on if I you just, want? Yeah. I just wanted to mention, really, that according to the Department of Works of Pension, that the average single pensioner has an income, and I mean an income, of £13,884 a year. Uh, the, the, uh, for a couple at the moment, it's 20, just over 29000 OK, now, so they're, they're, they're being taxed. All yeah, that, so yeah. the, major, the majority of people with pensions have small pensions, quite honestly. OK. I mean, that's really what but they're but asset to. rich though, Krista, and that's the thing where you get figures saying in London one in four pensioners is a millionaire on paper. So you you don't get a massive income, but your asset means that you own your home, meaning you don't have your mortgage anymore. Isn't that the whole point of society? Isn't it that we say to people, right, try and get on the property ladder and own your own home. Try and put in some money into your own pension as well so you can save for the future. And then are we really going to become the society that we say to those people who've been responsible enough and worked hard enough to do that? Oh, by the way, we're now going to take that from you let's, when you reach an let's age get one more call. where you can benefit. Ian in Worcestershire, hi. Hello there. What do you think? Good morning. Well, I think I, I'm 72. I recently, had, and my wife retired recently as well. She got the state pension, which I was really surprised on the other letter recently. And, it, and I didn't read it totally before. It says, your benefit is being increased. I object to even it being called a benefit. I've never claimed any benefit. Well, you say it's a benefit. Sort of, but, but Ian, it is a benefit, and that's a fact. It's a welfare benefit. Have, can I just say, can I just let me have my say? Yeah, go on, Ian. You've, yep. you've been saying a lot. That lady, that young lady, well, she's... 
rabbits in on. But the well, thing is, her people, name's Narinda. Why can't people remember her name? Narinda. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. We've only got ten seconds in. Uh, yeah, well, OK, we've paid in all our life. Well, the fact that the government has not put the money aside has got nothing to do with it. It was promised we have to work 30 or 40 years paying national well, insurance. Cool, it should be not the state pensions, the state pension. It shouldn't be a benefit. OK, and, and it's so half, Thank it's you. Half Thanks. The minimum, it's actually half the minimum wage. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your calls on this.